Michiganders can be a superstitious bunch. We find all sorts of reasons to explain the world around us, sometimes pulling from science, sometimes tradition, and sometimes from our imaginations. What happens when we can't readily explain our experiences? And what happens when a ghost story gets out of hand? Do these legends stem entirely from fantasy? Or are people seeing things no one can truly explain? I'm Krista K. Coburn. And I'm Kay Gray. Welcome to Haunted Midden. Hello again! Welcome back to Haunted Mitten Season 2! Thank you all for joining us through this adventure in podcasting and through this whole world falling apart thing. We appreciate you sticking it out with us. Uh, just a heads up, if things don't sound great, we're still recording from our homes and our setups are nowhere near as good as our studio. But we have the amazing and talented Eric Honky doing some cleanup for us and we sound way better than we did on our own. Sorry in advance for anything weird, for dog and cat noises, and the occasional static. Well, tonight we're finishing up our two-part series on Marshall, arguably the most haunted city in Michigan. We still have a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right. Jeremiah Cronin not only has the honor of one building named after him, but two. The first is the Cronin Building, a beautiful multi-story brick building located at 101 West Michigan Avenue. It's currently the location of a Grand River brewery as well as apartments. Its history is relatively benign, which marks it as a little strange that it might be so haunted. Cronin constructed the building in 1869, and since then, it has been everything from a millinery to a Knights of Pythias Lodge uh, to a business college. There have been thousands of people in and out of the Cronin building living, thriving, and learning for well over 100 years. The Cronin family have been the owners of the building since the beginning. When the original Cronins passed, their son took over. When he passed, his daughters became the owners. So what could possibly go on in a building with such a steady and prosperous history? Well, it's theorized by some that hauntings don't happen just because a place has a torrid past or because someone died in an awful manner or with quote-unquote unfinished business. The dead may want to just roam because they enjoyed their life or a building or because they just want to. If you really love the home you spent most of your life in, you might want to carry on in that space too. Brian Mason, who wrote the book we're using extensively for these episodes, opened his first store in the Cronin building in 2010. He and several other people had encounters in the building, including a man clearing his throat and asking, may I help you? And they weren't the only ones who heard that man's voice. Apparently someone is still working in one of the long closed shops. Female employees had their hair tugged or were touched on the shoulder. Thuds and sounds could be heard on the floor above, lights turned themselves off, and doors slammed on their own. So, of course, paranormal investigations have been held there. And during one, a door flew off its hinges and landed on top of someone. That might be one of the heaviest things I've ever heard an entity actually pick up and throw. That's messed up. Yeah. It's an entire door. And it, what I've did that person do? Yeah, I'm assuming it's this is an old old place, so the door was probably pretty heavy. Right, like it's going to be, you know, a really old, heavy wooden door. What? How? Why? Yeah, yeah. I want more details of this <laughs> because what I'm picturing is like Hollywood. It's wild. It's a door landing on top <laughs> of somebody and squishing them flat on the floor. That's what I have. Yeah. <laughs> like, how annoyed was this person this entity this whatever that these investigators were in there that they had to throw a door yeah i really want i want to hear this one straight from the investigators i do too <laughs> this, oh my this gosh is, this is a little wild do we know what group it was you don't have to say it on the podcast but um, is it I, written down what group it is i don't think it is uh we got research to do um, yeah i need to ask these people they may, may or may not still be around you oh i hope so I got to know what happened with this door. Okay. <laughs> That's insane to me. That's crazy. <laughs> Touching people, sure. Tugging hair, why not? Maybe making like stuff move around the house, opening cabinets or whatever. Uh, picking a 
pulling a door off of its hinges, picking it up and then throwing it at someone is uh it's a little too far for me. Yeah, what the the direct quote from the book was um and no they don't say um oh just it was a, a it was a group of us collectively attended a paranormal investigation an upstairs door fly off its hinges and land on one of the participants oh my god the activity was extremely high during these days and paved the way for much of my inspiration into the paranormal yeah uh that so, would yeah that would do my it. way to a lot of stuff as well if i got hit with a door absolutely yeah <laughs> All right. That's crazy. All right. That might make me think twice about doing investigations. It doesn't. And it won't. I will still go try to find the ghosts. But like, maybe I'll stay away from really heavy doors. I don't know. Yeah. Stay safe. (laughs) Stay safe, everybody, when you're ghost hunting. It's not just like people out there. Uh, You might get a door thrown at you. Who knows? You might know the second building the Cronins have their name attached to. If you're a fan of John Belair's book, The House with a Clock in Its Walls, or the 2018 movie adaptation, you might be able to picture the house we're talking about. It is a gorgeous Italian-designed home built in 1872 with a tower, balconies, bay windows, whole thing. The inside is every Victorian-era lover's dream, complete with brick fireplaces and floral wallpaper. Honestly, it's the kind of house Krista and I want to retire to. It's absolutely stunning, and it was owned by the Cronin sisters mentioned above until 2002 when Virginia Cronin passed. There have been new owners since, and the house has been restored to its original beauty. Ugh. But Gorgeous. it seems that the sisters haven't given up their old home entirely. According to Brian Mason, they can be seen in the second story window looking out over the street. There's a photo included in the book, Haunted Marshall. It's supposedly one of them looking in the window, but uh, I'll be honest, it I, I don't really see it. No. no um, Kay, you didn't see it. No. I'm looking at it right now. It's it's a black and white reprint, I think. Uh, there's like a... It looks like a circus tent to me. <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. It's like black and white stripes. Vertical stripes like a circus tent. Uh-huh. And, and then in one of the black stripes, there's like a vague smudgy whiteness that kind of looks like a skull all right to me but that's because i'm really looking if that's even what i'm supposed to be seeing i don't know no clue i didn't see anything that looks out of the ordinary for just an old window yeah and like i i couldn't just looking at this i can't even tell it's a window yeah i think we just know because we've seen the house yeah and there's a a picture of the house too and it's just oh yeah it's gorgeous i want it it's like a dream yeah, it's really beautiful. You can find videos online. Look it up. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. There's like home um, tours on YouTube. Look at them. They're, yes. They're, they're great. Um, but in addition to that, a former owner reported that the bed sheets were pulled off of him and his wife during the night and that they sometimes heard odd noises. Which is a super old house. So yeah, you hear right. weird stuff all the time. Take that for what it is. <laughs> yeah. But the most peculiar experience we could find happened while the house was being renovated. According to the Battle Creek Inquirer, the owner and a friend were sitting by the fire during the winter. The friend got up and unscrewed a light bulb to turn off a light while the owner chatted to him about cutting down a tree in the yard. As soon as he said he wanted to take down the tree, the unscrewed bulb came back on. The two men looked at each other, said, just kidding, ladies, and the light went out again. It seems the Cronin sisters really don't like when you mess with their home. (laughs) That's a gorgeous home. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want anybody to mess with that. It's yeah, great. absolutely. Speaking of gorgeous old homes, our next stop takes us to the Pace Mansion, also known as the Gibbs Lacey House. It's a very unique looking house built in 1838 on the highest point in Marshall. The Pace family lived in the house the longest, and over time it became affectionately dubbed the Pace Mansion. According to Dom Pace, the last of the family to own the house, the family had been heavily involved in the occult and used the mansion to contact spirits for many years. He claimed the spirits that haunted the home had never lived there, but had come because of the family's contact and had been trapped there. In Haunted Marshall, Mason has a whole list of things that happen in and around the home. A portal to who knows where apparently exists on the southwestern part of the property. A Swedish gardener who once worked on the grounds allegedly disappeared into the portal and has been seen a few times since. Of course, without a name or a time frame, we were unable to even start looking for missing persons records for this incident. Is this a real story? Did the gardener just leave? No clue, but we would really like to go find that portal. 
Yeah, you can find that portal. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, you don't want to? <laughs> I'll do it. Shoot. I didn't say I was going to go in the portal. Just all oh, find okay. it. Look, look over there. There's a portal. Don't don't go over there. <laughs> That's all. Along with that, though, it's an elderly woman who could be seen walking up and down the house's staircase. And something or someone enjoys pulling at clothing and bedding in the middle of the night. And then there are the kitchen cupboards that just refuse to stay closed. The family once tried to keep them shut with rubber bands, only to find all of the cupboard doors open again in the morning with a pile of rubber bands left and none of them attached to the doors. Most annoying ghosts ever. No, thank you. I'll take the door landing on me. <laughs> I have enough issues with kitchen cupboards. We have cats. They like to climb in there. <laughs> um, in fact, uh, I think it was Tully. I can't remember now. Figured out how to paw it open. Oh, great. Because there's no latch on our cupboards. Right. Um, great. She did one day. I, it was her or Memphis. I can't remember now. Memphis is heavier and a little bit stronger. Yeah, one of them did open the door and just walk in there while I was in the kitchen one day. And I was like, do you cats make a habit of this? Stop it. I don't, <laughs> I don't want you in there. Yeah. So imagine not only that, but then you also have a ghost or something who likes to keep all of the cabinet doors open all of the time. Yeah. That. Oh, no. That's the worst of all of the hauntings. I think that would be one of the worst for me. It'd be so annoying. Oh, for real. You can tug the sheets off the bed at night. I'm asleep. I don't care. You can even pull on my hair occasionally. Footsteps, no problem. But do not open my cupboards every night for like the rest of I don't know how long, eternity. Don't do that. Yeah, that would be a serious minus <laughs> for this house for me. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. And then the portal thing. Yeah, it's I don't the first time in our research that I've ever found something like that. I'm sure there are other places that claim to have portals. In fact, I know that there are. They're just This might be the only one in Michigan. I don't know. But what? Yeah, I have no idea what that's about. What happened um, to your gardener? Because that sounds like gardener got murdered and then somebody went, oh, there's a portal. He disappeared. Yeah, I would love to um, <laughs> talk about this house with, with Brian Mason. He's friends with, I think he's the current owner. I'm not sure um, without reading through this more in depth. But he says that they've talked for you know countless hours. Uh, about this house and its happenings and experiences so but he doesn't he relays quite a few in the book but he does not relay all of them yeah I'm guessing from hours of regaled by stories i so. i assume so like i i have i'm thinking that this entire town is just haunted oh all man this city is haunted <laughs> <laughs> just just all of it every building every park every tree why not just haunted uh, yeah. I think my favorite thing about the Pace Mansion, though, is that the owner of the house, Don Pace, was like, yeah, our family's been into the occult for years. We've been summoning spirits. Uh, that's why they're here. They're trapped. Yeah. He doesn't <laughs> seem particularly disturbed by this. No. Um, he said he, he was quite the character, too, and he lived to be uh, 107 years old. And it, Which, even um, he says at the age of 105, Don Pace was still walking into town. Man, go that guy. But yeah, no, it's just like, oh, the family was heavily involved in the occult. Yeah, you know, that's why it's haunted. And I'm like, let the spirits go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> let yeah. Them go. I don't know. I just thought that was a really funny detail. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's haunted, but yeah. not because, not because, you know, the spirits like lived there or like called the place home or, you know, came here for, you know, on their own. It's literally because we contacted them and we brought them into our home and now they're trapped here. Yeah. I mean, the house is old enough that it spans basically the entire spiritualism movement. So, right. <laughs> they could have been like, at it for a long time. Yeah. Think about how many talking boards and seances happened. <laughs> oh, there. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A ton. It's yeah. a nice little, it's not like a huge uh, mansion, but it, it is really, if you're into um, old homes, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It would definitely, it's on my list for like a walking tour of architecture. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's not a Victorian, so it does stand out, but it's it's a cool house. Um, so we have got a few more places to talk about moving right along. And that's not even all of them. We just don't have the time to go into detail on everything. But seriously, check out Brian Mason's book. He knows his city. He loves this city. And it's such a good resource, especially for podcasts. <laughs> oh, definitely. 
so next, it wouldn't be Marshall without Schuler's. And we couldn't talk about Marshall being haunted without Schuler's. Uh, this West Michigan landmark was once the Royal Hotel and Restaurant, when in 1924, Albert Schuler purchased the building and changed the, na- changed the name to Schuler's. Uh, this is according to WBCKFM.com, one of our favorite websites. For some reason, uh, radio stations just hook onto this haunted stuff and just write a bunch of really great articles. So we we love you, radio stations. Keep doing it. Today, the hotel is closed, but guests of the Schuler family are sometimes invited to stay. Uh, it's a really great restaurant. Yeah, um, it's very famous. Yeah, in there's the a billboard for it on 94. Schuler's Marshall, they just they just go together. Albert Schuler lived in an apartment on the third floor. Rumor has it that the apartment has been perfectly preserved since his death. The staff keeps it clean, but nothing is moved. Winston's pub, where uh, we ate actually on our um, on our day trip to Marshall way back when, is named for Albert's son, and that comes from Han and Marshall. Uh, so this place is included on basically every haunted list of Michigan ever. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, <laughs> there's not a lot to be found about it. No, surprisingly, compared to all of these other places we're talking about. Yeah. So there's the regular smell of cigar smoke, which could be paranormal, could be not, depending on how many people smoke cigars over that building's history. Apparently, all of the toilets flush simultaneously while they're being cleaned, which is just to me really helpful. They've heard laughter. Somebody heard a good belly laugh in the hallway and it's believed that that's albert schuler himself and that's about it yeah that's that's basically all i could find that's it that's all there is i i'm glad it's included on lists and i'm glad that it kind of brings marshall to the forefront for that haunted stuff but there's definitely like the next place we're going to talk about is the place that i would include yeah absolutely <laughs> um. on lists Nothing against you, Schuler. We love you. You're great. No, they, Your the food, food was great. Yeah. Your food is amazing. And the atmosphere was cool. I, I really, I didn't go there until we visited, but I knew about it because of those billboards on 94. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. how you know you're getting close to Kalamazoo is I see that billboard and I'm like, all right, yeah. <laughs> we're getting there. In fact, uh, like just quick funny story. So a, a friend of mine in, in college, he was not from that area. He only attended Western for two years before graduating um and his his family came out and they always saw that billboard too it's like infamous and when he graduated they said okay we have to eat at Schuler's <laughs> because we don't know you know if we'll be back out this way again uh so they did that's really um, funny yeah it was just because everyone is like what is this place what is it yeah and because it's it's just there the billboard is huge and it's been there yeah. for decades and... yeah it's been there for as long as i can remember yeah uh, so which is a long time so, <laughs> <laughs> but on to the next uh the stagecoach inn was built in 1838 and is the oldest continuously operated inn on the detroit to chicago line when the railroad came through it stayed popular as a stop for weary travelers and after its decline became a factory then apartments it survived two fires and numerous name changes Today, it's a local pub, which is totally fitting for the place, and it may have even been part of the Underground Railroad. Mason says that there are several hidden rooms and even a tunnel hidden behind a fake fireplace that runs from the inn to Schuler's restaurant across the street. A lot happens here, to say the least. Awakenhaunt.com, a spooky haunted house attraction located in Leslie, Michigan, claims that employees report doors open on their own, Photos get flipped over to face walls and cupboards open on their own. More of those cupboards. Some guests even say they feel a tug around their waistline during their meal or when visiting restrooms. Awaken Haunt claims the stagecoach used to be a gentleman-only bordello and hotel as well. And one of the apparitions seen there is a lady of the night who got a little too tipsy and then tipped over the railing of a balcony to her death. There isn't a lot of history on the Stagecoach Inn online in general, and the only corroborating evidence we found to support this is from Schuler's Restaurant's blog that claims the inn was a one-time bordello. Uh, So we don't actually know if it was a brothel, but if you have any more info on this, please email us at contacthauntedmitten at gmail.com. We would really love to know the truth. That's 
I, I need to know if that place was a brothel. It, I just have to. <laughs> I don't know why. It just it's part of the thing. <laughs> well, it's quite it's quite the claim if it's if that's not it's, true. It's a big claim. It's yeah. not really insulting, but I feel like it's such an easy thing to be like, oh, this place was a bordello back in the day when like maybe it wasn't. <laughs> right. I, yeah. Especially if you have like a female ghost who's maybe this is going to sound weird to say maybe like an attractive ghost hanging around you might just kind of oh she must have worked as a lady of the night here once upon a time yeah i feel like there's such a like a romance in that and people seem to really like the idea of prostitutes haunting bars for eternity it's weird yeah because it happens a lot apparently (laughs) yeah it's it's one of those i almost want to say tropes that you hear in ghost it is a lot. yeah yeah it's it's almost like a ghost cliche yeah it is yeah. Uh, but uh, back to the ghosts in marshall mason writes that the name of the ghost is actually who oh boy xenos tillotson xenos that's a fun name i like it uh the first proprietor of the building footsteps can be heard on the upper floor along with the sounds of clinking empty bottles down on the main floor women occasionally get their hair pulled again (laughs) this happens a lot in marshall (laughs) what's up Uh, (laughs) the jukebox turns on of its own accord and there are more footsteps and bottles clanging from the back hallway mason himself witnessed a shot glass behind the bar jump three feet into the sink and of course a mysterious fog has appeared on the building security cameras in the bar because there's always a mysterious fog Uh, yeah absolutely that's another one you see a lot (laughs) yeah fog mist glowy airy white stuff mobile smudges on camera film (laughs) yeah basically uh however i think it's time we go have a few drinks my friend absolutely yeah we've been to (laughs) shuler's now we gotta go to the stagecoach we gotta go to stagecoach uh there's, there's a lot happening there for sure and last but certainly not least no haunted city would be worth its salt if it didn't have a haunted theater to go with it wagner's block was built by a man who lived the so called American dream. Marshall V. Wagner came to Marshall in 1863 at the age of 18 without a cent to his name. He started out as a store clerk, then moved up into reading law with an attorney, and by 1870 he had enough wealth to build his own commercial block downtown. Not just one building, an entire block. This block housed several enterprises over the decades, including Wagner's own insurance agency and a ballroom slash auditorium. The block building used to be home to the opera. And reportedly, the theater setup is still inside, uh, complete with posters of the last opera performed hanging on the walls. The ghost here is a remnant of the opera, like in so many other haunted theaters. People still hear an actor practicing in lines and acting out his scenes from the shadows of the old place. There is an old opera theater still inside the Eagle Brothers block, also called the Block Building. And information from a 1986 edition of the Marshall Chronicle leads us to believe this is the same building. And apparently, you can take a tour of it. Who knows if they're still being offered in the time of COVID, but how cool is that? You can do a bit of urban exploration and you might get to see a ghostly performance too. I absolutely want to take that tour. Oh yeah. See a ghostly performance. (laughs) And just like marvel at this stuck in time opera theater. Like that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. That's so cool. I just want to go back to Marshall. What are we kidding? It's changed a little bit since we were there, too. There's a bookstore down there now, too, that I'd like to check out. That would Um, be great. That wasn't there before. Yeah, it's just, it's a really cute little town. I really like it. It's great. I love Marshall. I may or may not have been looking at houses on Zillow and Marshall. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And and there, it kills me because the real estate is so much more affordable out there. Oh, I know. (laughs) Just, I know. (sighs) Oh, one day. Yeah, I would be. (laughs) I would be closer to my family if I was out there. That's um, true. I want to work at the the Magic Museum, so maybe they would. Oh yeah. Maybe they would hire me on. Well, maybe if they they don't restart the haunted tours, we can uh, jump into that. <sighs> all right, game plan. All right. So that's not all of the spooky places in Marshall because we're pretty sure the entire city is haunted, but those are the big ones. Uh, If you'd like to know even more, like we said, we highly suggest Brian Mason's book, Haunted Marshall, as well as taking Ghost Tour if and when they're ever offered again. Um, There's nothing quite like being able to stand in front of the building yourself while hearing or reading about what happens in like its ghostly residence. It's just, it is 
a much different experience than just listening to a podcast about haunted stuff. It immerses you in it way more than just mm -hmm. hearing the stories can. Um, and be sure to have a drink or grab some food at any of the great local restaurants downtown. Uh, you know, once the threat of dying from COVID goes down, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully soon. But uh, in the meantime, you can listen to us. And thank you for doing so. It's because of listeners like you that we've been steaming along this summer, doing more research, more writing, and more recording. So thank you. And a thank you to our cleanup guy, Eric Honky, who makes this podcast sound much better to your ears. <laughs> Trust us. Mm -hmm. He's available for hire for all your editing needs. If you'd like to contact him, send us an email or visit our site at hauntedmitten.podbean.com. We'd love to put you in contact. And if you would like to help us remove that little Podbean part from our website URL, you can go check out our Patreon. Yay, Patreon. Yay, we have one now. Yay. Um, lots of cool stuff is going to be going up there. We're going to be doing a live stream once, once a month. Um, once we kind of like get, you know, enough people in it where we'll just be telling stories, hearing stories from you guys, our wonderful listeners. And yeah, just talking because we've all been in quarantine and social distancing for more than half the year at this point, And we really just need some human interaction. Yeah. It's, it's been surreal. <laughs> Yeah, to say the um, least. There should be a couple of stuff up on Patreon. Um, as of this recording, I do have a um, story. I recorded myself reading a ghost story from history um, because there are th the 19th century was just loaded with ghost stories that people wrote. That's all they cared about it's, was ghosts. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> so I just, I went and found some stories that are in the public domain. I read one, recorded it, and that's up there now. And then. Um, when this airs, I'm pretty sure I will have the interview with my mom that we talked about in the quarantine episodes from last season. Um, I just need to do a couple of quick edits. Eric was such a help on that. He made it sound so much better. I had so many difficulties recording it, let alone editing it. So right. yeah, he, he was a big help in that. So by the time you hear this, that should also be up on Patreon for you to listen to. Yeah. Um, and we have a Discord. So any amount of money to us a month will get you access to our Discord talk about episodes, talk to us, talk to each other. Uh, just come have fun in a ghostly way. Um, other than that, um, you can find Haunted Mitten on all social media, just looking for Haunted Mitten or Haunted Mitten podcast. We're up there. Find me at K Gray Writes most places. I'm not super into Facebook because it's terrible. Um, I'm loving Twitter these days, though, because I just surrounded myself with a bunch of people from the paranormal community, and I had made my little, like, ghost bubble, and I just stay away from all the bad stuff. I'm so glad I converted you to Twitter. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very easy. It's easier on Twitter, I think, than anywhere else to just kind of find your own little community and hang out there. Yeah. And I just, I had so much time being unemployed for six months that I thought, hey, why not? <laughs> i have the time to devote to this now you do you pretty much <laughs> uh krista um you, you can find me on twitter instagram and facebook at krista k coburn i'm pretty evenly active across the three because i just cross post everywhere and now with facebook owning instagram everything is integrated anyway so mm, that's true uh, and we have a book coming out yay it's yep. not a haunted mitten book it's not a ghost book there might be some ghost stories in it but <laughs> you should buy yeah. it anyway. Uh, it's called Fairy Tales Punked. And we did a Kickstarter for it over the summer. And it was super successful. Krista and I both have stories in it. Both of our husbands have stories in it. We kind of took over this book. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a strong presence anyway. <laughs> we do. Yeah, the artwork is fantastic. Um, there were, I think, I forget how many, like four different artists. I think they took like three, three stories each. The illustrations are great. I've never been in an illustrated book before, so this is really fun. I know. This is awesome. Um, and they're all very different. It's called, they called it myth punk because some are myths. There's a tall tale. There's diesel punk, steampunk, clock punk, all different kinds. And some of the stories are still fairy tales or told in that way. Um, and then others are just regular, or say quote unquote regular stories that you can tell were inspired by a fairy tale. Yeah. Um, so there's some of them are dark. It's a lot darker than the other uh, books I've been in lately, but it's not like an adult book. It's 
maybe right. like YA and up, like teen up or something like that. But yeah, like my story is like YA and it ends. I'm not gonna say how it ends, but like it's it's a lighter story. But um, right, there's Mine definitely is too. yeah, yeah, there's definitely some darker stuff if you if you prefer your fairy tales to be a slightly more traditional. Yeah, so there's just some really fun stuff and some real different fairy tales that probably never heard of. Um, so check it out coming relatively soon. Um, I. Th- I think it might be available to the wider public maybe in January, maybe December. But so okay. yeah, keep an eye out for it. Yeah. We we will definitely be advertising the heck out of it when it's available. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh request it at your local bookstore. That would be great. All right. Well, thank oh, you for exciting. sticking around for part two of Marshall. And as always, happy haunting.